Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Q at HP Discover 2014. Brought to you by HP. Welcome back, everybody. This is Dave Vellante at Wikibon, and this is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's continuous live production of HP Discover 2014. We're here in Las Vegas at the Sands Convention Center. This is HP's big US customer event. We also covered uh, HP Discover in Europe and Barcelona last year. Actually, believe it or not, the European show is slightly larger than the US show. HP, global company, more business done outside of the US than inside of the US. And we're here, we're going to drill down into the networking space. Dominic Wild and Alex Monroe are here. Uh, Alex is uh, the Assistant Vice President of Corporate IT Enterprise Technologies at Pacific Life Insurance. And to my direct left is Dominic Wild, who's the Vice President and Global Product Line Manager for HP Networking. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE, good to see you. Thanks, Thank right? you. Okay, so we're here at HP Discover. Uh, of course, you've got big announcements, right? Dominic, yep. what's, what's the big news? So we've uh, announced this week uh, our new virtual cloud networking solution. Uh, it's really about delivering the data center of tomorrow today. And the, uh, it, it's made up of uh, three essential parts, delivering a solution. Uh, basically, it's a, a software-defined networking application called VCN, Virtual Cloud Network. Um, this is actually a network virtualization solution that is integrated into HP's Helion OpenStack Cloud solution. Um, that is simplifying by a factor of 20 how we deploy uh, networks for multi-tenant networks in a cloud environment, but also increasing by a factor of 20 in the OpenStack environment, the scale to which we can deploy those virtual networks. So we're really sort of delivering you know, greater agility, much better scale, simplicity, uh, but we're also changing the economics by integrating it into the Helion, uh, the Helion product as well. And then in addition to that, we also announced uh, a new set of switches, the 7900 series of switches, which is a, a new form factor of switch, a space-saving switch. It actually reduces space uh, in the data center by about 50%, reduces power by about, 50, by about 20%, uh, and reduces overall complexity in terms of configuration by 75%, while still increasing availability. And then alongside the product announcements, we've also announced a set of transformation services that help customers on the journey from traditional IT to cloud-enabled data centers as well. So when you say 20x uh, simpler, what, what are you measuring? Just sort of human uh, uh, time? Is it clicks? Is it? What, what yeah, is it? It's, it's, it's basically around clicks. If you look at a traditional model, um, if you do about sort of you know 10,000 provisioning steps a day, um, you're, for each kind of configuration step, you're doing about 20 clicks. Um, with this new VCN application, it's basically one-click configuration. So you're reducing the complexity by a factor of 20, rather than having to go to each and every element in the network to change and configure, you're actually doing it from a central position and being able to define ad hoc networks in a multi-tenant uh, configuration. All right, Alex, let's bring you into the discussion here. Uh, we always love to get the practitioner's view. Uh, you and I met in Boston. We were just trying to figure out where we met. At, uh, <laughs> and we had a great discussion uh, about you know, sort of your environment, about your relationship with HP and where that was at. But let me start with Pacific Life, large insurance company, um, regulated industry. Uh, describe sort of the company a little bit and your role there. Sure, so uh, Pacific Life, obviously everybody knows us for the uh, whales on TV. So it's uh, life insurance, annuities, financial services. It's, it's really broad spectrum of investment protection against uh, actually people living too long or unfortunately departing too soon. But uh, great company, a lot of history, 146 years old. Um, and it's, it's, it's really is a you know, premium brand in the insurance space. Almost double HP's age. And your, <laughs> and your role there is? is yeah, uh, my role, so I run um, Enterprise Technologies, which effectively is most of the data center management, networking, unified communications. We still have a mainframe, uh, data center operations. I also run all the email infrastructure, communication systems, SharePoint, collaboration environments, things like that. So really, the I call myself the plumber of Pacific Life, so I kind of keep things keep things moving. So, what are the big drivers in your business that are affecting change? I mean, if people talk about the big four: cloud, mobile, social, big data, and then underneath that, you have a lot of, you know, technologies. We're talking about SDN today, um, uh, etc. How are these affecting 
your organization? Yeah, the, the biggest uh, opportunity for us, obviously, is kind of maintaining a, a flat cost structure, but being able to deliver more value, more service to the business. So your, bu your budget's flat every year, essentially. In general, yeah. I mean, we, we can we can get more budget if we need it, but we try to you know we try to keep it consistent. That's your mandate. Yeah, that's the business. It. Not the business yeah, is mandate. not the business, business at all. Not you at just all. keep it flat and and support the business. Yeah, so really, it's about the amount of value you can de deliver for a given spend. Um, for us, also, just more on the infrastructure side. You know, we have these periodic refresh schedules where, we, where in a large environment you are looking at significant capital or significant effort to refresh your environment, particularly while you're keeping everything running. So for us, partnering with HP, you know, both on the network side, we also leverage HP for servers, desktops, et cetera. It really was an opportunity to kind of uh, leverage a partner relationship and combine some functions uh, into a more effective operating environment for our, for our users and our business. And, and talk about the applications that you're supporting. I mean, an insurance company, the, the claims app sure. is the heart and soul of customer service. Yep. Your agent systems are about the sales growth. I mean, those are the two, two of the biggies, but what, what are you supporting? I mean, describe that portfolio a little bit. Sure, well, sir, obviously there's the, the policy generation software, case management. Um, on the annuity side, a lot of investment, uh, you know, investment type software applications. Um, we also manage about 130 billion in assets. So really, at the end of the day, there's a lot of, um, we have hedging grids and we have uh, actuarial grids, which really gets us into the high performance computing model. And we're doing a lot of that to predict analytics and look at how we price our products. So really across the board, we have everything from ERC, ERP systems to life insurance you know, products to annuities type products. We also have a real estate division. We have an aircraft group. So we have a lot of uh, a lot of moving parts. It's really, really at the end of the day, um, pretty standard you know, environment, mostly Microsoft. Um, but it, it is a large environment, about 5,000 you know, virtual servers supporting, supporting the enterprise. And you're in a hyper-regulated industry. Very um, heavily That's got to be putting some serious challenges on you. It seems to be getting I'm just going to say it, you probably can't, but worse. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, joking a lot of folks in the industry from what I can understand. Yeah, I will say that we take regulation and compliance very seriously and everything we do is aimed at protecting our customers and uh, protecting our policyholders which actually own, it's a mutual holding company, so they actually own, own the company. It's a private company and we really do focus on protecting the brand and our, and our customers. So presumably it's sucking up a bigger and bigger portion of your budget pie, is it, is it not? Or are you able to keep that portion flat um, as well? I would say compliance and security are both areas that we are investing in. Yeah, okay. yeah. So well that, That's all I'll say. Well said. <laughs> okay, now my, my last question I want to come back to, to Dominic is cloud, uh, are you, Using it all, any public cloud uh, infrastructure. For, for um, we have a couple of applications that we can run in a public cloud. We use it for on-demand services, or um, if we have a situation where we don't have capacity internally, we'll burst out, you know, burst out and leverage cloud for some of the grid-type application I talked about. Some of the calculations we call it compute on demand. Okay. And so we do have a couple models where we do that, but it, back to the compliance and uh, security discussion, we do prefer to keep our sensitive data, the crown jewels, in-house, and we run our own data center. And so essentially you're, you're trying to replicate the agility and the cost structure on premise. Right? Yes, yes. So that's where you guys come in. So how, let's talk about how you help them do that. Let's talk about SDN specifically. Why yeah. so, uh, software-defined networking? Why now? Why is now the time? So. Um, Essentially, when you look at uh, when you look at the sort of speed of business, the speed of business is, is just you know accelerating, it, and it's exponential year on year. So, as Alex said, I mean, you know, organisations, particularly IT organisations, are being asked to do so much more, but keep budgets flat. In fact, many organisations that we talk to are being told they have to cut budgets, and particularly you know when it comes to networking. When you talk to CIOs, you know they'll tell you we've probably squeezed out about as much as we can out of the server real estate. Um, you know, data is just going to continue to be a, a, a value um, entity that we're going to just keep growing, and so you know, storage is, has reduced the cost per, per um, gigabyte of data, but you know, we're going to keep buying more and more storage. But networking, you know, they, they, they have struggling to really understand what is the value beyond connectivity that they're getting from the network. And why is it so expensive? And why has it been you know, so expensive and so static for so long? And so SDN is the opportunity to really revolutionize networking, to really introduce back in significant innovation, um, re reduce costs, increase agility, um, increase the ability 
to align the network with the goals of the business. Um, today, the network is is regarded as a roadblock to business. I mean, you know, Alex, I, I don't know if you have this experience, but you know, every time that something goes wrong in the IT infrastructure, it's always the network's fault, even though it isn't, because you know, basically, people just go straight to the fact it must be the network's problem. And so, when we talk to customers, what they're looking for is uh, they're looking for improved mean time to innocence. Um, to be able to prove that it isn't a network problem. Mean time to innocence? Yeah. That's a new metric. Yeah. Um, like and, and so, you know, to be able to say this isn't a network problem and more proactively make the network dynamic so as the network itself can, in a more autonomic way, be able to, you know, show that, you know, there's a, a problem here or to be able to adjust to a, a, a potential problem-like scenario without the intervention of, you know, human middleware. And SDN is, is, is the opportunity to deliver that kind of innovation. So, you know, it's, it's early days, but we're already delivering SDN applications that are really adding value. Um, we're already selling those commercially, and we're already working with customers, and customers are, are finding their, their own ability to innovate within their environments to create solutions themselves without having to wait for a vendor like us. So, so I wonder, Alex, if I can ask you, I think of networks, enterprise networks sometimes as like the Kremlin, very hierarchical, you know, very structured, and now with mobile, you're seeing uh, you know, this sort of north-south emphasis change to east-west. How is that mobile affecting your business and is it affecting your network you know, uh, yeah. concomitantly with that? So great question. We, um, uh, I came up through networking, so I have a lot of background in networking, probably 20 years or so. Um, mobile was considered a nice to have, a convenience, and then people started running things like Link, real-time video, FaceTime, these, these high bandwidth, mm -hmm. latency sensitive, real-time communication applications, and they just expected them to work on the wireless network, in the basement, in the garage, in the elevator, and so we really had to go from a wireless perspective and really look at our buildings, you know, do our studies, RF studies, saturate the building essentially, and, and treat it as a tier one app. And uh, that, that was a big challenge, it was a big wake-up call, kind of caught us a little bit off guard, but we spent the last couple of years really fortifying our wireless infrastructure from meeting rooms you know, to executive offices to all levels of all buildings so that people could have a consistent, reliable experience. And also we weren't burning a lot of minutes, so if you're on a mobile device, you, know, you can burn a lot of, if you're on a 3G or 4G, you're paying for that data and you're paying for that, those minutes. When you're on a wireless network now, it's effect, I don't want to say it's free, but it's effectively a fixed cost structure. And you can, again, back to delivering value you know, to our business partners, they can now collaborate real time from home, on the road, in the, in the office, without having to think about, am I at my desk, am I connected to the network with a cable? You know, I'm on my iPad, I'm on my, I'm on my laptop, I'm on my smartphone. I'm just you know, working, really I'm not there. thinking about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 don't have to think about it, so. And so is your network effectively, over time, flattening? Is that, and you, as you push data to the edge, or not necessarily? I will say, as the, as, uh, I'll talk about the data center for a second, and, 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 I'll, and the building, which are the closets, the IDFs. You know, our, our theory is that we push out all network nodes to every location in the building. And the reason we do that is we never know what business group or what division is going to occupy a floor or a section. So for us, one of the big uh, advantages with HP is that we went in and we designed the data center network and the building network as a holistic, I'll call it an organism for the time being, and we manage it all with a single you know, pane of glass, which is IMC, and it allows us to have things like quality of service, you know, gig to the desktop, 10 gig everywhere in the data center, 40 gig uplinks into the core, and it really allowed us to deliver a lot of performance and a very easy to manage, very holistic, you know, experience for not only the network engineers, but the IT, application development, and then the business users. So that, that was one of the big advantages we're gaining with the, with the new network that's going in So that right was now. a lot of HP services that, that provided that? Uh, and, and we definitely are leveraging HP services. And what about the gear? What are you actually um, buying from well, HP? Well, the gear, we, we buy the, uh, the 12,000 series core switches. We're doing top of rack design, so we have 5500s. We used to cable everything to the end of the row, and it was a lot of cabling, a lot of copper infrastructure. We're pretty much eliminating all the copper from our data centers, going all direct direct attached to top of rack, and then bringing everything back to the core 12,000 switches, which have been great. We are using the IRF, the fabric framework, 
and so that gives us the resiliency and the redundancy you know, for every system in the data center. And then we extend that all up to the closets, and that's an extension of the data center network. We do have zoning for security, we do have the ability to do filtering, we do have the ability to do class of service and all of that, but it really, it, it's a much more flexible framework and, and network architecture than what we had historically with our previous vendor. So, I want to ask you, I mean, why HP? I mean, that's part of it, right? Yeah. But you got a 66% you know, market share guy, guy out there, safe bet, nobody ever got fired for buying IBM, why HP? Um, all I'll say is I believe in you know, conducting um, RFPs, bringing equipment into a lab, and letting the engineers get their hands on it so they can learn it and, and make an informed decision about what they're buying. We followed that process uh, with, we, we had four vendors, we went down to two. The two finalists we actually brought in and did extensive work in the lab, not only for just their equipment, but we bridged it into our current networking infrastructure and actually ran some of our applications and made sure that we were going to have a seamless transition from where we were to where we wanted to be. Um, all I will say at the end of the day, when we looked at the overall value, back to value, the HP partnership, um, you know, they, they emerged as the, the, the best vendor for the selection criteria that we have. Now you guys are primarily a Microsoft shop, you said. Is it a lot of Microsoft, Hyper-V or uh, VMware? No, VMware, or? VMware, VMware environment. VMware. Okay, yep. and then what about OpenStack? Are you doing anything with OpenStack? We're Kicking not the a, tires at all? Not or? a huge OpenStack company. Pretty yep. traditional, life insurance is not a, right. it's a low risk business. And we're very cautious, uh, you know, about, we don't, we don't bleed a lot. We're not we're not a bleeding edge company, you know, we're not a we're not a eBay, we're not a dot you know, we're not a dot com. We are we are really a life insurance company and we, we behave like Any that. Any open source activity going on inside the company bit, though? Or the labs, development? Yeah, some of the development, yeah, mm -hmm. but you know, most of it's traditional traditional uh, vendors. So so if it, it would it would take OpenStack to hit critical mass for you guys to even look at it, right? Is that yeah, fair? and it's part part of it's a skill set discussion. Yeah. You know, when you when you do have to look at your staff and how they're trained and what they're comfortable with. Um, and that you know that goes to all levels. That's application development all the way into the infrastructure teams, and uh, you know you have to take those things into account when you're making those kind of decisions. So our research shows that about a little over half of the customers we talk to are in that camp. They would rather uh, have a stable relationship with a vendor, even risk lock-in. Talked a lot of Oracle customers, right? And they say we risk lock-in uh, to get value mm -hmm. and reduce our our risk mm -hmm. overall. About 15% say that, no, we want open, open source, open right. everything, and yep. so, but that 15% is a big foothold for you guys, isn't it, Dominic? Yeah, it is, absolutely. I mean, you know, we, we as a company are big believers in open standards and, and, and open source. Right, always have been. And, yeah, and, and the reason that we, we continue to, you know, to, to move down that path um, as a company is, because for us it does mean, it means choice and it, and it means interoperability. Even if you want to take everything from a single vendor, um, and you know, and, and by the way, we would love to sell sort of you know HP on HP. Um, but even if you want to take everything from a single vendor, be able to do that with open standards-based protocols, open standards-based um, you know operating systems, etc., just gives you that much simpler interoperability. So as you come to you know to transform your your infrastructure or transform your IT environment, it becomes a much easier proposition. And I give you an example. I mean, the example is is HP IT itself. Um, you know, we did a, a huge transition for the company. Our IT staff um, did an amazing transition for the, from the company where they transitioned from the infrastructure we had to an HP networking infrastructure throughout the company. And at the same time consolidated from over 60 data centers down to six. Now all of that was done in under a year. And the reason they were able to do that was because that they had relentlessly gone after open standards throughout the infrastructure. And so that transformation and that transition, when a decision was made from a business perspective to do that, became a, you know, I would say easy, but it became a, you know, a straightforward um, uh, proposition and meant that we could do that with the resources we had and we mm -hmm. could do that in the time frame that the business demanded. And that's the other critical thing about open standards is it gives you business agility. It gives you agility and continuity and those kinds of capabilities. So it's not always about just kind of like, hey, I want to you know, plug 27 different vendors stuff together. Um, that's often not the case. It is often the case that people want to buy you know, everything, a complete solution from HP but they want to have that, that knowledge and that comfort in the fact that somewhere down the line, if there is a time where they have to 
bring something else in or they have to adapt quickly for the business, they can do that. And it gives you R&D leverage as well with the crowd. It does, so. absolutely. All right, we've got to leave it there. Gentlemen, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE and sharing your stories and, uh, and good luck going forward. Thank you very All right, much. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back after this word. This is theCUBE. We're live from HP Discover. Be right back.